Gypsy, Ethel Merman, and Gypsy, then you've heard Edgar play. Anyway, that's where she got her musical talent. Not Ethel, Molly, from Edgar, not from me. They're a lot alike, Molly and Edgar. Maybe that's why she likes him best. Did that sound petulant? I didn't mean it to. It's just a statement of fact. You see, fathers don't have to be disciplinarians. I bet you Joan Crawford's daughter got along with her daddy just fine. No coat hanger problems between Christina and Mr. Crawford, I'll wager. Anyway, here's Molly, after 13 years of piano study with the finest teachers we could afford, reduced to giving lessons. She says it's more fulfilling than real estate, but at least that got her out in the real world where she could meet people, men to name names. I can't believe I said that. I mean, I know that a woman can lead a full and meaningful life without depending on a man, all by herself, completely alone. On the other hand, maybe this little pervert here has a wealthy, divorced daddy who Molly's heart could belong to. There's always hope. They're that good, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, um... Oh, well... I mean, it's amazing, isn't it, how something as slimy and hideous looking as that could taste so... well... almost edible. Another one of nature's disgusting delicacies. <laughs> Like squid. And pig's feet. Cows and brains. Frog's legs. Speaking of legs, is that your hand slowly creeping up mine? Uh, well, I'll be darned. <laughs> Boy, talk about your aphrodisiacs. That is all really true. All that stuff about oysters making you sexy. No. Oysters make you sick. Silk lingerie makes you sexy. Uh, you know, I have some of that, but it's back at my place. Check. What? Well, oysters must be in the air. Look at that older couple over there. That guy must be in his 60s, and look at the way he's looking at that woman. I bet he signals for his check, too. Oh, go on, take a look. I don't want to look at them. I want to look at you. Oh, come on. Well, drop your napkin. Oh, yeah, that's very subtle, isn't it? It's got some good moves. Oh, my God. What did I tell you? That's my father. Really? Oh, he's very attractive. So's your mom. She's cute. Yes, she is. Only that's not her. <sighs> I think <clears throat> we're gonna have to do this another night. I haven't been shut out by a girl's father since high school. He didn't see you. No, I know, but, but that's not really the point. I saw him. I'm just not feeling very romantic, and it wouldn't really be very good for either of us. I mean, my feeling this way just wouldn't. I mean, that's not to say it won't be, but just not tonight. <laughs> Sorry, uh, humor in uniform. <laughs> um, look, I promise we'll do this again soon. You know, we'll skip the dinner part. We'll just start right here, hot and heavy, okay? Mm. Uh, tomorrow night, I promise. I'm supposed to fly to Rome tomorrow. I'll call in sick. They don't need pilots anymore. It's all computerized. See you later. Mm -hmm. Nice evening, Miss Dodd. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yes, very. Well, that is until we... <laughs> well, look, something awful has happened. Do I have to tell you this? Sure. It's this Irish pug of mine. People want to confess things to it. In fact, there was a time I seriously considered putting it to good use and taking up the cloth. <laughs> but Bridget got herself pregnant, and I had to marry her. Well, the church may have lost a great pope. <laughs> <laughs> Dee, do you think it's possible that there could be another man in New York City who looks exactly like my father at about 20 feet away? I've read somewhere, maybe in here, 
that everybody has an exact double somewhere. So it's not all that unlikely that there'd be a dead ringer for him who lives right here in New York. Wearing the same sport coat? Sure. Same car parked outside the restaurant? Coincidence. A kettle drum with his initials in the back seat. Bingo. Davey, how long have you been married? Well, let's see. 39 years. Yep. Do you, you know, do you ever think about seeing someone other than your wife? Cheating, you're saying. Well, I... You're talking to a man who believes in the sacred sacrament of matrimony. When I feel something stronger for a woman other than the woman I'm married to, that's when I get me a divorce. Mm. Which I've done four times now. Which probably puts the kibosh in all that Pope talk. I thought you said you've been married for 39 years. Total. Yeah, well, I guess you have to work at it. It ain't easy. Nine. I live on 12. So you do. So what do you say we just keep going? I'm so glad you called. You are? Why? What is a four-letter word for portico? Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, look it up for me, will you? Our dictionary's all the way downstairs, and I've got the burglar alarm on down there, and I don't want to have to mess with it. Where's Dad? He's out playing poker with the boys. What boys? Well, old boys. Some new friends he has. Sometimes he plays two or three times a week. Uh, doesn't that bother you? Frankly, he's been at such loose ends since he's retired that I'm happy he's found something he enjoys so much. <sighs> yeah, but I mean, two or three times a week. Honey, if he's happy, I'm happy. Have you found that word yet? What? Oh, uh, no. What was it again? Four-letter word for portico. I think it ends in A. Why were you calling me? Uh, <laughs> I must have dialed you by mistake. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. I'm always glad to hear from you, even if you don't call me by mistake. What's wrong? Nothing. I I was just going through my address book to see if my numbers were up to date, and yours checked out OK. So, well, see ya. Not so fast. Are you sure you're all right? Uh, birthday presents for the twins. Yeah. Hey, now, shouldn't we be talking about that? We already have. We're meeting tomorrow. We are? Why? To buy birthday presents for the twins. Well, uh. Guess we better get to sleep, so we'll be all rested for tomorrow. Mom, what's that? Well, I guess your father's home. But, I mean, how do you know about somebody trying to break in? Because most burglars don't carry kettle drums. Don't you want to talk to him? Uh, well, yes, but, uh, but suddenly, ooh, ah, I've got a terrible nosebleed. You have? Well, get your head back right away and keep it there until it stops bleeding. <laughs> well, who are you talking to? Molly, she's got a nosebleed. Yeah, Dad, thanks very much. Uh, no, Mom's uh, suggestion did the trick. Uh, it stopped. Well, stuff cotton up in there tonight. It could start again when you're asleep. Have you got some cotton? Yeah, I'm sure I do. If you're out of it, you can get some out of the top of one of your aspirin bottles. Have you got any aspirin? I've got cotton. Oh, good. Well, then, uh... So, how are you doing otherwise? Uh, uh, fine. Um... Oh, I just got in. From a date. Really? Did you have fun? Uh, oh, yeah, it was very nice. We went out to dinner. Well, that's nice. Uh, where'd you go? Go? Uh, oh, some little place you've probably never heard of. Uh, it's uh, called... McDonald's. Uh, I've heard of it. Uh, well, I mean, no, I mean, uh, that McDonald's is another place. It's an old McDonald's. It has kind of a farm-like atmosphere with an E at the end of old. Old McDonald's with an E. I. E-I-O, uh... Boy, uh, Mom says you've taken a poker. Oh, yes, I have. It's a wonderful game. Low ball, spit in the ocean, five-card spud. Stud? Yeah, stud. So, did you get lucky tonight? No, uh, I, I, I meant, did you win? Win? 
Oh, I don't play to win particularly, uh-uh. No? Well, I mean, what are you in it for, then? Oh, you know, just the fun of it, the excitement of high stakes. I don't believe him for a minute, Molly. You don't? Oh, I think he just doesn't want me to know how much he's winning. The way he comes whistling in here after those games, I'm on to him. <laughs> she caught me, didn't she, Ma? She knows I can never keep anything from her. Yeah, you can't fool her, can you, Dad? Well, uh, we miss you, kiddo. Uh, sleep tight. Mm hmm. Well, you sleep tight, too, Dad. Good night. Dad? I can never quite understand this particular duty that I've been assigned in life. This is not difficult. You can't take time out from your busy schedule to buy a birthday present for your brother and sister. At least they had the good manners to be twins. Meaning what? They were born on the same day, which is more than I can say for you. Uh-huh. I see. So, what, you're gonna ask maybe coming from Long Island? You're gonna ask Dwight to come from his commune in Oklahoma just to help you buy my gift, Mother? I don't have to. You're the easiest person in the world to buy presents for. You've always loved everything I've gotten for you. Isn't that true? Yeah, Ma, you can't have too many dustbusters. Oh, this looks good. Maybe I'll take some of this overpriced food home to your father for supper. And the other night, I brought home Chinese food like I've been doing every Thursday night for the past 25 years. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he said, did it ever occur to you that I might like something different once in a while? A man needs something besides chop suey every so often, Florence. I thought that's what he wanted. Something he could count on, something nice and familiar. If he wants something different, I'll get it for him. But not at $12 a pound. Um, Mom, how have you two been getting along, anyway? Fine. Well, uh, uh, you did say that he was a little, uh... <sighs> have you ever thought about the two of you taking a little trip? Where to? I don't know, uh, someplace hot. Why would we want to do that? Well, uh, see, I know you told me that you and Dad were having a little trouble. Nick, do... Well, that's not of your business, dear. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. Fine. Sometimes... I'm so sorry. I'm oh. so sorry. I thought I turned it off. Oh. I'm very sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry about last night, too. You know, I I didn't think that after 24 hours I'd still be so upset about seeing my father with that woman, but I promise you I will make it up to you. Nothing wrong with a good night's sleep. <laughs> oh. Now that we're so well rested, I have a you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just ignore it. Okay. I come into town to get my snare drum reskinned. On Sunday. What? Oh, yes. Well, I've got this person who's been doing it for me for years, uh -huh. who keeps strange hours. Very eccentric, but a real craftsman. Daddy, could you keep your voice down? What? Well, it's Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, and the neighbors. Oh, oh okay. Anyway, I was in the neighborhood here, and I was going by this bakery, and I thought to myself, Edgar, why don't you buy some sweet rolls? Go over to Molly's and get her up and make breakfast with her, just like we used to. 20 years ago. Right. Oh, uh, Daddy, I'm really, I'm not very hungry. Ah, you always used to say that, too. Then I'd get you down in that kitchen helping me. You'd end up eating eggs and bacon and two stacks of buckwheat. Uh, uh, would you excuse me for just a minute, Dad? I, uh, uh, something I, I have to. Do you know how nice it is to wake up in the morning smelling coffee, hearing you in the kitchen? Uh... 
How do you do that when you're in here? That, uh, is my father out there. He's making breakfast. I take it you don't want me to go out there and say hello? No, not right now. But, uh, oh, here's something you can read. I'll be back very soon. Give him my regards. Isn't this great? Just like old times, huh? Exactly. So aren't you cold in that outfit? No, uh, no, I'm fine. I know you saw me in that restaurant the night before last. I think we should talk about it. Restaurant? Well, what restaurant? What's there to talk about? Molly, I saw you, you saw me. We should talk. Uh, Daddy, look, you really don't have to do this. I know that. Remember that time when you were 17? And your mother and I came back early one evening, and that uh, Matusak boy was upstairs in the bedroom with you? Oh, like it was yesterday. And uh, do you remember what you said? That if we loved and trusted and respected you, we wouldn't put you through a lot of questions about what might have been going on up there. And uh, we didn't, did we? Provocative as that situation was, never brought it up again. Not to this day. Well, that's what I'm going to ask you to do in this instance. Hey. Huh. Glad we had the opportunity to get this out in the open. Feel a lot better, don't you? Mm, yes, much. Except that we didn't quite get it out in the open, did we? No, not quite. Some things are harder than others to talk about. Oh, I'll say that, yes. This uh, woman you saw me with, Dad, look, really, you don't have to do this. No, no, no. I, 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 I want to. She's a, she's a cellist in some of the orchestras I used to play in. Pretty woman. Divorced. Beautiful, actually. Lonely, too, I think, for a person as incredibly attractive as she is. Anyhow, during our breaks, we used to have coffee and talk about everything. Sometimes we'd even go out after the show once in a while and talk some more. Just talk. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she called me a couple of weeks ago. Well, actually, I called her. But uh, she said she missed our talk since I retired. Said she missed me. When you retire, it does something to you. It makes you feel old. You're not old. But I felt old. That talk with Andrea really picked me up. Andrea? Buxbaum. She said maybe we could have dinner sometime. I was flattered as hell, went right out and got a haircut and a manicure. I mean, a man my age isn't asked out to dinner by a gorgeous woman every day. I began to think my poker game was going to be the highlight of my life. But so you really were playing poker? Did we talk about this on the phone? Well, yeah. Oh, no, listen, forget it, nothing. <laughs> so when I saw you the other night, that was your dinner with Andrea. Mm -hmm. I'd um, prefer it if you um, didn't mention this to your mother. I, I wouldn't expect her to understand like you have. Oh, sure, fine. <laughs> no problem. Oh, my, I sure feel better. <laughs> Me too. So that's all there was to it. <laughs> Dinner. Boy, this coffee really goes right through you. I, I, I've got to. Uh... Oh, uh, Daddy, uh, there's something I've got to tell you. Um, Dear. No, uh, remember that time with Jerry Matuzak? There's something that you ought to know before you go in there. Oh. Uh, yes. Oh no, no, you you don't have to tell me anything. I mean, like we were saying, love and trust and respect and all that. Right. <laughs> but um, I really do have to go. That's my dad. Love to meet him sometime. I think you will. I'm Edgar Bickford, Molly's dad. Blake Novak, Molly's uh, pilot. 
Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Blake is a... Uh... Pilot. Ah. Oh. Air Force? Commercial. Ah. So, uh, how long have you two been... Have you two been uh, knowing each other? Uh, not very long. Oh, but long enough, though. Yes. <laughs> I'm no good at this, Molly. I, I'm, I'm not that sophisticated. Well, I, Dad, I mean, nobody's done anything wrong here. I am 34 years old. How about you, Blake? I'll be 40 in March. No, I meant, are you good at this? Good at this? You mean uncomfortable situations? No. No, they make me uncomfortable. Right. Uh, well, if we'd like to take a consensus on this, I personally am absolutely mortified. <laughs> All right, then. Let's have some breakfast. <laughs> All mm. right. That's a great idea. I like him. Yes, well, so do I. And I'm glad we had this little talk. It's a load off. Oh, Dad, uh, wait a sec. Um, I think the balance is a little out here. You know, I mean, you now know the whole truth about Jerry Matusak and me, and, well, I guess about Blake and me. And... And I still love and respect you. Good. But, you see, I don't think that I know the whole truth about you and... And you still love and respect me, right? Well, sure. But I... I... Well, there you are. That's my daughter, Molly, on her exercise bike. She's not an exercise fanatic, but she likes to stay in shape. I certainly can't criticize her for that. The only confusing thing is that after spending a half hour working herself into a furious sweat, she'll drag herself into the kitchen and wolf down a pint of Prusen Gladia. Eating right is not her best subject. Her best subjects are sweetness and kindness and caring. Unfortunately, she's never found a profession in which to display these talents. The truth about Molly is that she'd be an excellent mother. Perfect, in fact. She's very patient. And kids are nicer when they're around her. Even my other daughter's kids, who aren't nice around anybody. She talks to them and they listen. I don't know what she says to them, but they laugh and run around and she laughs and she runs around. So why didn't she have some of her own? She hates it when I ask that. She says, Mom, stick to the little questions. Okay, then, why doesn't she own a decent scarf or a real pair of boots? Why does she have a closet full of clothes she never wears? And why is she making her bed at 3 a.m.? I missed our lunch. Oh, Amina, I'm sorry. Forget it. I can afford to miss a meal. Look, I gotta have something to eat. Oh, yeah, I'll look. Where were you? Well, I was here. Are you sick or what? I don't think so. I feel fine. It's just that I was up early. I mean, really early. I was up at 3 a.m., wide awake, full of energy. I just puttered around the apartment. I must have fallen asleep. I, mean, I had this dream. But it, there were horses in it. There were lots and lots of horses. Thundering hooves and rippling banners. And turtles. I mean, well, they weren't really turtles. They were sort of gauchos with these lances. Well, they destroyed your living room. I told you I was puttering around. 
At 3 a.m. It's the ideal time to putter. You hate it. Oh, wait, let me live with it for a while. Yeah, I hate it. Of course I hate it. It's preposterous. Are you sure you're okay? Me? Hunky Dory, I feel like a million bucks. Why don't I believe you? Because I just crawled out of bed in the middle of the night, which is actually the middle of the afternoon, to answer the doorbell. But you feel okay. I feel better than okay. I feel positively euphoric. Everything is beautiful. Everything's not beautiful. It is to me. Since when? Since I fell in love. Why are you talking in song titles? Because that's how you talk when you're in love. You're not in love. Really, I am. You cannot be serious. I'm deadly serious. Who is it? How come I don't know about him? You do. Blake. Blake? Blake Novak? You got it. The pilot with the soap opera name? You're not in love with him. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Prove it. I just wanted to say congratulations, Molly. I'm so happy for you. That goes without saying. Now prove it. I can't prove it. I only know what I'm feeling. Look, I've seen you with Blake. It's nice. You like each other. But it ain't love, pal. Thank you, Nina, for your unbridled enthusiasm. But you know, I don't really feel like debating this right now. Blake will be here in a little while. Love in the afternoon? Could be. Well, I gotta get back. Some of us have to work for a living. Let's be sure to do this again real soon. I love the chow. My pleasure. Send me a wedding invitation. Don't kid a kidder, kid. I told her we should have phoned ahead. Don't be silly, she's thrilled. Here, dear. Ah, this is innovative. Uh, work in progress? Yeah, well, it was just an idea. Oh, I think it's very clever, Molly. I think it's stupid. Of course, it's not right for me. That's a lovely kimono. Mom, what are these? We were shopping at Bloomingdale. They are having the most wonderful sale on suede. Since you never buy anything for yourself, I took the liberty of picking up some things for you. Suede things. I told Mom you'd want suede. I hate suede. Well, you can't wear it all the time, but it certainly has its place. Uh, not as far as I'm concerned. Me either. That's why I'm glad Mom insisted on buying you more traditional things. It's just a couple of wool sweaters. Mom, I don't need these. I told her you had a closet full of bulkiness, but you know Mom. Let's just keep buying things for Molly. <laughs> Would this be part of the uh, conversation pit? Actually... It'd be nice for reading if there were a lamp. Look, I'm really glad to see you both, but I've got to get dressed. And then uh, I'm on my way out. Is this a job interview we're going on? Yeah, that's right. A job interview. Well, that's fun. I must say I envy you, Molly, out there in this city with all the opportunities it has to offer. I can really understand why you've never quite lit in one place <laughs> when you could be doing this today and that tomorrow. Kind of makes your head spin, doesn't it, Mamie? <laughs> Even though you're probably longing for something permanent by now. No, I'm pretty happy with the way things are. And, well, you should be. I mean, there's a lot to be said for not caring what anybody thinks. Well, I certainly don't care what you think. <laughs> girls, girls. No, no, Mom. We're just talking. <laughs> what time is he picking you up? Who? What makes you think I have a date? Mom, she just told us she has a job interview. She doesn't. For a job interview, she wouldn't ladle on all that mascara. <sighs> this is a date. Is this someone we know? It's Blake. Blake Novak. Oh, what a delicious name. The pilot. Yes. Finn will be on our way as soon as I visit the powder room. The toilet is still over against the wall. Yes, Mother. So, Mamie, how you been? Well, actually, think things have been pretty exciting over our way, what with Len being elected to the National Entodontistry Council. 
Mom did tell you, didn't she? Uh, not about the actual election, no. I want her to be a surprise. She doesn't tell you anything about what I'm doing, does she? <laughs> of course she does all the time. It's just I've got a mind like a cheese grater. She tells me everything about you. I'm very proud of both my daughters, even if one of them does have suitcases under her eyes. Mom, keep away. Trust me, dear, I saw them do this at Bloomingdale's. You'll thank me for this. Thank you for that. Uh... Great, it's Blake. Well, you can't let him see you like that. Blake. Blake Novak. This is my mother, Florence Bickford, my sister, Mamie Grolnick. Mom, Blake, Blake, Mamie, everybody mingle. Well, this is a <laughs> unexpected treat. We were in the area, so we just decided to stop by and admire the decor. Yeah, I've seen the same kind of traffic pattern over Kennedy. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see, because you're a pilot. <laughs> well, I, uh, let's see now. Your husband is the uh, dentist, right? Actually, Len's an endodontist. Endodontist, I see. That's that's sort of like a... Um... Dentist! Actually, he's been in the papers quite a bit recently. They're making remarkable progress in simplifying the whole root canal process, and Len's kind of at the forefront of that movement. Really? Dr. Grolnick? Mm-hmm. Dr. Len Grolnick. Yeah, uh, I think I have seen his name. How do you spell that? Just like it sounds? No, I mean with a C-K or a K. C-K. Gronick. G-R-O-L-N-I-C-K. Uh, we really should be on our way. I have his card in my purse. If my relatives aren't gone in two minutes, I'm coming out of here stark naked. Have a seat, ladies. Uh, uh, it was nice to meet you, Blake. Say goodbye to your sister, Mamie. Goodbye, Molly. Don't you two get married without us. Mom. Uh, call me, sweetheart. Let me know if the sweaters fit. Are you really naked? Because if you are, I can live with that. I could change our reservation. Molly? Hmm? How you doing? How's your girl, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> so that was your mom and uh, Mamie. Mm -hmm. I liked him. You want to just stay here? about this. Oh, that's certainly one option. Is that trendy, that line down your face? Oh. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll get it later. Should have eaten first. I had no idea that we were going to burn all those towers, although I'm not complaining. Shh. I, I got to get out of here. Now? Yes, immediately. Okay, let's go. No, no, no. I, I'm going to go home alone. You stay here. Why? 
But I, just because, it's got to be that way. Yo, please be quiet. I can't just let you go home by yourself. No, you have to. i got to be alone. What's going on? I don't know. I can't talk about it. So shut up. Pardon me. Excuse me. You know, Mr. Art, Javits was a great man. Moynihan, I ain't sure about, but Javits was a giant. I miss him. What do you make of the Senate race? Excuse me, please. If we could just not talk New York State politics right now, I would appreciate it. Okay, let's talk local. Looks like Koch just dodged another bullet. Listen, Davy, if we could not talk politics at all right now, I would be eternally grateful. Tell you what, why don't we ride? Wait, hold that elevator. <laughs> How'd you get a cab so fast? I yelled taxi in one stop. Oh, I couldn't get one to save my life, so I ran all the way from the theater. I, I looked for you out front, but I couldn't find you. You were gone. I told you to stay there. Well, I would have, but I ran out of popcorn. Uh. <laughs> Come on, Paul. I was worried about you. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong, no. I mean, everything's just peaches and cream. It's just I needed to breathe. Why can't you breathe with me? Why can't we breathe together? We were breathing pretty well together this afternoon. Yeah, we certainly were. Uh, Blake, I don't want to see you anymore. Are you serious? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, oh, where'd this come from? Blake, I love a relationship. I mean, you're intelligent and witty and adventurous, and the sex is incredible. Giant sail at Alexander's. I mean, you're a pilot. You fly to the four corners of the globe. Any woman in her right mind would give her right arm to be with a guy like you. Uh, you're almost perfect. Well, give me a chance. I can change. Uh, <clears throat> you make me feel special. I love being with you. But you don't ever want to see me again. Right. There's a certain Pirandello quality to all this, but uh, maybe I ain't paying close enough attention. Molly, uh, maybe I have some jet lag, or maybe I'm missing something, but you want to give me a hint as to what's going on here? Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, there's a flag in Lincoln Center. It's over near the Avery Fisher Hall. Well, it's closer to the 62nd Street side than Amsterdam. It's not actually on 62nd Street. It's just kind of set back by that little fountain, you know what I mean? Yeah, right, a flag. Um, it's blue and yellow. Maybe it's yellow and blue, but those are the primary colors. Now, there might be a little bit of green in it, but it's very subtle. It's mainly blue, royal blue, and yellow. It's kind of a golden rod or a flaxen yellow. Now, this might be the flag of some underdeveloped country or the flag of New Jersey, or maybe it's ornamental. Uh, call it ornamental. Yeah, oh, well, we don't know that. Uh, granted, uh, please. Now, some days when I pass this flag, and I pass it every single day, some days when I pass this flag, it looks blue, totally blue. There's not a hint of yellow to be seen in it. I mean, you can look at it from any angle, and all you will see is blue. Other days, it's just yellow. It's like someone has drained out all the blue. Like they have taken that flag and stripped it bare and siphoned out every single solitary drop. Of, of the blue, right. not the yellow. Uh, this flag's on the 62nd Street yes, side? Yes, I said it was on the 62nd Street side. Just trying to clarify it geographically. I want to be sure I got the right flag in my mind. Doggone it, isn't that always the way? I gotta skedaddle. Keep me posted. I mean, maybe, maybe it was the way the wind was blowing, maybe it was just dust particles in the air. Or maybe it was the way the light bounced off the buildings. It made those colors just shift and change the way they do. Molly, can or I maybe stop it's you for a minute? Sure. <laughs> There's no point to the story in terms of you and me. I don't think so, no. Then you don't have to talk about this flag anymore. Oh, good, because I am all talked out. I mean, I'll keep going if I need to. No, no, I don't think I want to listen anymore. Why don't I give you a call sometime? Yeah, sometime. Hey. 
At intermission, if you get some time and you're around 62nd Street, oh, forget it. It's too complicated. Enjoy the ballet. What are you looking at? You're losing it, huh? Losing what? I ain't surprised. I've seen it coming. Even before the flag story. Well, I liked the flag story. Oh, I'm sure you did. Like them poems you've been writing. She's that last batch. The ones about cavalry officers digging their spurs into the flesh of dead mm -hmm. horses. And them headless women being sucked into the abyss. And octopuses and the transmissions of cars. Scorpions, not octopuses. Yeah, some with a lot of legs. Jeez. Cuckoo's nest. Davy, it's not as bad as that. It's a spirit in crisis, if you ask me. Which I didn't. I don't know. Something's wrong. I feel like I'm watching myself from the outside, like I'm a spectator in my own life. Did you ever feel like that? You're in a state of flux. Have a cup of tea. Listen to some Mozart. Lace that tea with some good Irish whiskey. You could even skip the tea. <laughs> I can't go in there. Some lunatics rearranged all my furniture. I want to go for a walk. Uh, melon ballers? No, I mean it. I, I need one of those little silver things you use to make melon balls. I mean, do you have any or not? Well, then how do you expect me to make melon balls without a melon baller? I mean, what kind of place is this anyway? I'm sorry. Uh, I've seen you forgotten my wallet. Two things. One, do you know where I can get a good melon baller at this time of night? And two, um, could you recommend a decent shrink? Because I'm pretty sure I'm losing my mind. Oy vey, huh? Call me. That's Molly and her best friend, Nina Shapiro. They've known each other since they were eight years old. Nina is a wonderful girl. Edgar and I've always liked her. Edgar still calls her his anarchist daughter when he sees her, which is now only at holidays if we're lucky and she has nothing better to do. At one point in her life, Nina was burningly involved in any issue that was political, controversial, or required hurling herself in front of a police barricade. I respected that, although had she been my daughter, I'd have been a nervous wreck every time she left for Cuba or Chile or China, which she used to do about every two weeks. 
But that was then. Nina's not quite so radical anymore. Now she actually has conversations about electrolysis and cellulite and aerobics. There was a time in the 1970s when Molly and Nina grew apart. But after Molly's divorce, thank you, Lord, they found each other again. Sometimes when they're together, I hear the same laughter I remember hearing when they were 10 years old. They go down to the basement, which we were finished in 1962, to watch cartoons on our old black and white Sylvania. In a lot of ways, I wish it was still 1962. for me, Molly. I know what's in your freezer. You also know what's in your mind. Oh, is that right? Yep. I know, for example, you're trying to worm your way out of calling Dr. Litchfield. No, I've decided that I don't need a shrink. I have decided that I am fine. Well, she's expecting your call. But I took 10 minutes out of my own session to tell her all about you. Well, I appreciate the sacrifice, but I have suddenly gone stark raving sane, and I don't need Dr. Litchfield. Two nights ago, you were a basket case. I thought it was Norman Bates on the telephone. Granted, I was a little distraught, but I am aces now. I think Dr. Litchfield is an excellent psychotherapist. I think she can do wonders for you. Well, she hasn't done wonders for you. I don't think I'm fat anymore, even though I am. I'm not terrified of spiders or my father, although I don't seek them out. I do still dance naked in front of my window, but that's not crazy. It's just expressive. No, that's crazy, but that's what makes you the unpredictable madcap you are. Are there any brownies in here or not? Don't despair, Nina. Keep digging. Oh, uh, uh, hi. Something burning in here? Uh, I was cooking. Oh, yeah, I remember. What can I do for you, Fred? I need to get my moon boots. I don't think you ever returned them to me. No, I returned everything to you. No, no, no. I think they're still on top of the closet. Can I come in? Nina Shapiro, how you doing? I'm looking for brownies. Freezer. Already checked. Ice tray. Bingo! How come he knows where they are? He used to live here. Yeah, but he doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> how old are these things anyway? You ought to stay away from that stuff, Nina. Why? You think I'm fat? It's just it's not good for you, darling. He thinks I'm fat. No, he doesn't. You think I'm fat. Uh, easy, Nina, easy. easy. It's okay. I'm okay, I'm cured. They're frozen anyway. Where did you find those? Right where I left them, in the big plastic bag with your wedding dress. I'm surprised you never noticed them. Oh, I don't wear it very much anymore. It tends to make my dates nervous. Well, I gotta get going. Well, you don't have to run off. Car's parked illegally downstairs. Well, it's after six o'clock. Kirsten's in it. See you, Fred. Bye, Nina. We're uh, driving up to Sugarbush. You know, just for the weekend. How idyllic. Maybe there'll be an avalanche. Hmm. Oh, Davey, grab some of these, will you? What are we reading here? Psychoanalytic theory. Ain't exactly a Sidney Sheldon, is it? No, well, I've been thinking a lot about insanity lately. Perhaps you've noticed. Yeah, I notice a lot of things here in this little cage, Miss Dodd. But it's been my policy to not comment one way or the other. I'm thinking of seeing a psychoanalyst. Not a minute too soon, if you ask me. What are you going to go for? Gestalt? Jungian? Transactional? Regular. Couch, sofa, nothing too tricky. Well, just make sure whatever doctor you get yourself involved with understands the importance of dreams. Dreams are the key to our inner feelings. Dreams can give us new information and confidence in ourselves. Dreams can open us up to a wealth of ideas and energies. Dreams can bring self-understanding. Or it could all be just a bunch of crap. 
Once again, Davy, thanks for the perspective. Mon plaisir. And as ever, watch your step. Mm. Mom! And where were you? I was at the library. Well, I've been in the hallway for half an hour. Are you waiting for me? Molly, this is Wednesday. It is? Oh, it is, isn't it? Yes, dear. Perhaps in the future I should call ahead to confirm a standing engagement we've had every week for the past three years. Yeah, Mom, I'm sorry. You know, I've just been in kind of a fog lately. Of course, you don't eat right. You don't have a job and you sleep on your stomach. My God, it must be 85 degrees in this apartment. Mom, what would you say if I told you I was going to see a psychoanalyst? What happened to that nice pilot you were dating? No, Mom, no, this isn't about dating. This is for treatment. Well, I'm stunned. I had no idea that you were so unhappy with your life. Well, I don't know that I am so unhappy. I just know that things are complicated right now, and I'm floundering. And, and who knows? I mean, maybe a disinterested person could help me out. A stranger. A doctor. A strange doctor. Who else have you told about this? Well, Daisy. Of course, you tell the elevator man before you tell your own mother. And I suppose he'll tell everyone else in the entire building. Mother, it isn't necessarily something to be ashamed of. It's easy for you to say. It's not your daughter. Thank you. I knew you'd understand. Well, pardon me if I'm not thrilled with the fact that my daughter is about to go to some witch doctor who's going to tell her the cause of all her problems is her mother. No, you're not the cause of all my problems, Mom. Well, assuming you are my mother. If I'm not, I went through one of the most agonizing deliveries in the history of organized childbirth for nothing. If I am your mother, I'm sorry I was such a rotten one. Mother, why are you taking my problem and turning it into yours? This isn't your problem. It's your family's. The Bickfords don't have their heads examined. Please think twice about this. No, I have, Mom. And I pretty much decided that I'm going to go. When? As soon as I can get an appointment. Well, I'll go with you. I, no, no, I'll just take you to lunch, and then you'll go home, and then we won't talk about it anymore, OK? That sounds very reasonable. Well, it is. Then why do you need a shrink? Because bees are eating my shoes, Mother. Now, is that good enough? Fine. Just don't use your real name. Um, I'm, uh, Molly Dodd? Here. You're a little early. I am. I'm sorry. I, I'm usually late. Would you mind filling out this personal history form? Oh, hey. Uh, I'm an open book. You can ask me anything. Here's a pen. You can sit right over there. It's nice. It, yeah, it's not at all what I expected. <laughs> I thought it would be something a little more Viennese. You know, darker, with heavy drapes, more humid, dank, oppressive. But that was probably just my preconception of what this type of environment would look like. I mean, it's silly to assume that it would actually be some sort of d dungeon. <sighs> if I don't stop talking to myself, I'm going to kill myself. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I am really not suicidal. Not at all. No. <clears throat> How's that form coming? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I have to tell you, I'm a little nervous. So, this is it. Therapy. The big T. <laughs> I guess it all happens right behind that door, doesn't it? Hi, Molly Dodd. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Same time next week, Mrs. Spellman? Yes, thank you so much. I learned a great deal, doctor. Nice to meet you, Molly. Yeah. So, you're Dr. Litchfield. Yes, I am. Janet Litchfield. Well, Janet, oh, thank you for letting me make a blithering idiot of myself just now. First visit is always a little idiotic. Yeah, well, certainly, if you pretend to be the receptionist and your bathroom pretends to be the office and that old lady pretends to be you, yeah, well, sounds a little paranoid, doesn't it? Molly, may I call you Molly? Oh, uh, well, yeah, that would be fine. A session lasts 45 minutes. I expect a 24-hour notice of cancellation. I take the month of August off, and my rate per session is $75. Ah, uh... uh... Nina, my friend Nina Shapiro, she said that, um... 
discounts could be arranged for the benefit of people like myself who are temporarily between jobs. Seventy-five is the discount. Well, that's certainly fair. Uh, now, what about this form here? Mail it to me. Time's a-wasting. Well, you want me just to launch right into it? Mm-hmm. Well, um... <clears throat> Uh, well, I've been doing a lot of reading lately about this subject, and, uh, it seems to me that my problems, uh, directly or indirectly are related to, uh, you know, in some form or another, to... Excuse me. Hello? Hi. Tonight, huh? What time? Okay. Oh, I don't want to see another film with subtitles. How seven? Yeah, me too. Me too. Kenny, I'm with somebody right now. I know. Fine. Okay, see you later. Yes. You were saying that you'd been reading some books and you had a theory about your problems. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I have made a few notes on the subject based upon the research that I've been doing. <clears throat> Problem number one. My desire to have a child versus my biological clock. Well, <laughs> I bet there are a lot of women in their 30s who are grappling with this subject. I'm 34. Problem number two. My inability to choose men who are right for me. <laughs> well, uh, boy, that is a great one. And of course, that leads directly to problem number three. My inability to commit to relationships right or wrong. There are many subheadings under these three categories. I just thought this was an area that we could begin with. I, if you'd rather have me start with my childhood. Why don't you try to talk about what you're feeling now? Uh, I grew up as a small child during the Eisenhower years. Uh, they were a very peaceful time. Uh, some might say dull, the 50s. Uh, what I most... Hello? Sally? You're in town? Fabulous! Oh, no, I can't tonight. Yeah. Kenny? Well, you remember Kenny. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Where are you staying? Oh, they've renovated that place, haven't they? Oh, breakfast tomorrow. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Stop. Lunch would be fine. Okay. Yeah, you sound terrific. Yeah, glad you're back. Bye-bye. You know, uh, if this is not a good time for you to talk to me, I can come back some other time between phone calls. Do the phone calls upset you? Me, personally. <laughs> yes, you. I, I don't know. I, 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 you know, you're a very busy woman. You have a right to get phone calls. It's, you know, it's probably just because uh, I'm new with this. I'm a little bit edgy. You know, and if I snapped at you, I'm, I'm so sorry. So, uh, where was I? Ah, oh, yes. I was going to tell you about when I was four years old. Now, when I was four years old, my twin brother and sister were born. Do you mind if I pace? If you need to pace, you should pace. The twins, Mamie and Dwight. Now, I told you this was during the Eisenhower years. It seemed cute at the time, anyway. Oh, no, wait. I mean, the fact that they were twins could be meaningful, couldn't it? I mean, there I was, an only child, a happy child, and suddenly my role in the family was displaced by not one, but two younger siblings. I mean, talk about your rivalries. Indeed. So I guess that could account for a lot of things. You know, I still have quite a difficult time with my sister. I mean, maybe I'm too tough on her, Mamie. You know, she's got two kids, a husband, and their relationship. While it isn't my cup of tea, I'd be, you know, it certainly works for them. And my brother, Dwight. I mean, I don't see him very much. Really, I should call him. I mean, you know, now at the rate so cheap on the weekends. <laughs> Molly, let me stop you for a minute. Well, sure. What are you doing? Oh, do you want me to sit down? Molly, you're wasting time. 
Now, I'm getting paid for my time, so that's irrelevant. But wasting your own time, well, that's unforgivable. No, I'm not wasting time. I am building up to something. What? Now, I'm not interested in your brother, or your sister, or your nieces, or your nephews, or your cousins. Well, that's not a very friendly thing to say, is it? If you want to be my friend, call me on the phone. But you're talking about everything in the world except what you're feeling right now. I think maybe we should call it a day. Fine. Well, I mean, maybe I don't need to talk to someone who's not going to listen. Especially someone who's rude. Is only interested in making $75 an hour. And don't worry, I will mail you the check. You want to know something? You're just not very nice. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> One year, and they said it couldn't be done. Yes, and you think we've cleared all the hurdles, Oh, you? yeah. <laughs> I think we're home free. Mm. What do you say uh, we consummate this thing? Hmm? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, here. For me? Well, actually, for me, but from you. Oh, all right. Well, here. Oh, gosh, you remembered. <laughs> Let's jump in the shower. What, just for a lousy bunch of flowers? Uh-oh. You think I didn't get you something, don't you? Oh. You thought I forgot all about today. Hey, Mr. Reliable, now why would I think of a thing like that? Well, prepare to eat crow. What is this? Crow. <sighs> I think I'm about to feel this tall. Do you want me to wear this in the shower? No, you don't want to get something like this wet. Mm. How beautiful, Fred. It's just what I wanted. A plastic ice cube with a fly in it. it, it it's not just a plastic ice cube with a fly in it, Molly. It's a plastic ice cube with a fly in it. Key ring. They had them with hornets, but I figured that was too gaudy. The guy wanted to sell me fake vomit, but I told him this is an anniversary, not a birthday. Yeah, it's very funny. <sighs> Made a joke out of our anniversary. I appreciate it. Well, I gave you the flowers, didn't I? Tell me something, for... Oh, what are you doing here, anyway? I live here. Yeah, I thought you were supposed to be playing at Vinny's Venetian Castle. Yeah, well, as of this afternoon, they're going to be short one jolly jester. Mrs. Vinny had us in harlequin suits today. What, so you quit? Quit fine. What's the difference? Would Charlie Parker wear tights? Yeah, well, I guess as long as I keep my job, it doesn't really matter how many times you get sacked. Let's not hassle about money today. I can't keep up with you, Fred. I mean, you're not here, you're not there. You're never where I think you're going to be. I need to know where you are. Where are you, Fred? I'm right here, babe. Always right here. You're stuck with me. I am, really? I think so. You really don't like the key ring, huh? Uh, no, I love it. I was right not to get the hornet. Yeah, maybe next year. Yeah, that's the beauty of the thing. Uh -oh. oh, I, I, I got something else for you, too. Oh, great. What, a can of snakes? <laughs> nope. Here. What's this? That's, uh, something I wrote for you. Came out pretty nice, too. You want to hear it? Sure. Thank 
According to my watch, I've got 15 minutes left, so let's get to work. I was married to a musician named Fred C. Dodd, and the guy's got a hold on my heart so tight that sometimes I think I'm never going to breathe again. So I put this ad in the paper, so we meet, and she reads me this poem she wrote. And even though I, I think she should change the title to Night Wind to Nightfall, and uh, I'm, I'm not really sure I get the part about waltzing with your own corpse, but right away, I know she's perfect. Okay, let me just uh, start again here. My name is Steve Cooper. I'm a songwriter. And music only. Well, actually, what I write is jingles, which are songs. They're just little ones, and... Well, if they happen to be about, uh, you know, bananas and washing your hair instead of life. Well, you know, so is South Pacific. That was two months ago, and we have got this one jingle. It's on the air. Uh, just, well, it's a little song, and uh, we're working on another. And you get stuck sometimes. It's no big deal. You get stuck. I tell her that. I tell her lots of things. Well, I talk too much. But, oh, anyway, oh, Molly. I don't know about you. It just doesn't sound like eggs to me. It's like nearly, but I, it's like definitely some sort of a dairy product. But what am I? What? If, wait, no. Hold it. What if I just? What if? What if I just pull this up here? You know, sort of give it a little something a heart around these. Little shell, a little shell, a little something, a little liquid toward the center. A little, get the albumin in the middle. Is that what? That's it. Isn't it? It's eggs. That's it. That's it. I, I don't know about you. This is eggs. I've got eggs here. Mo Molly. Uh, so how long was I uh, talking with myself? Oh, I'd say about uh, 20 minutes. I didn't really think I was adding anything, so I decided that since the motif was eggs, that maybe I would cook us some. What do you mean you weren't adding anything? I'm sorry. You see, I've just never worked with a partner before. I don't want to screw you up. Blocked. You are blocked. You're stuck. No, stuck. You look, you make an omelet. You should see the things that I do when I get stuck. Oh, come on. You never get stuck? Stuck? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I get... You know, sometimes if I'm feeling really stuck, I get on the A train, and I just ride it, you know, from one end of the island to the other. Ooh, no, wait, wait, no. Oh, if I'm really stuck, then I go to the middle of Times Square, and I look up, and I just... I just oh, oh, it's so much. But... <laughs> Oh, well, I get stuck. You know something, Cooper? You are a peppy guy. Peppy? Oh, well, I'm happy if that's what you mean. You're probably the only person in all of Manhattan who actually is who he wants to be and is doing what he wants to do. Except maybe for a couple of nuns and Crazy Eddie and Fred. Who is Fred? Um, he's my ex-husband. Oh, what does he do? Nothing. Or anything he feels like. He writes songs, he plays. Actually, we sort of worked together for a while. Well, so what would you two do when you got stuck? Ah, well, dumb question. What's this? What's what? In the margins, it looks like some notes or something. 
Oh, no. Oh, those are just some ideas that I had for the jingle, but they haven't all, you know, come together yet. Are you kidding me? Molly, you've got the whole song right here. This is perfect. Oh. Cooper. No, 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 no. I was right the, about the first song we wrote, wasn't I? No, that was just beginner's luck. You think everything I do is perfect. Oh, this omelet, for example, is not perfect. This omelet is a disaster. Well, let's get something to eat. Go ahead. Go ahead and what? Say it. I am not going to sing to him. He's not just a him, Molly. Well, what am I? You're America. I'm your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Now, what could be more American than that? Oh. But I ain't necessarily yearning to be sung to. Yeah, all right. Yeah, look, just read it to him. My mother's kitchen table on an autumn morning. Brunch with an old college friend. No one home, eating alone. Breakfast on the farm I worked one summer. Breakfast at three in the morning, at four in the afternoon. The diner on the highway, the diner under the Brooklyn Bridge. What does that remind you of? Eggs. You see? Well, why? Why does it remind you of eggs? Well, you've got a great big picture of an omelet on that cookbook you're reading from. Uh, what, what, what about the words? I have no idea what they meant. Something about a bridge. Thank you, America. Look, he understood. Maybe if you actually mentioned eggs. Where do you get them little pianos? Evening. So what do you want to be? Hey, you know what I want to be? I want to be 24. How's that? And what did you want to be then? Happy. Were you? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I really was. I mean, looking back on it all, I was happy. But then, I mean, maybe when I'm 44, I'll look back at when I'm 34 and think that I'm as happy now as I was when I was 24. I'm beginning to sound like you. Mm. Listen. What? Oh, that's it. What? That's our song. That's the Starlight Jingle. Oh. <laughs> this is so cool. I mean, there she is, this woman. We don't know anything about her. She's watching the news, and then boom. We're right there in the middle of her life. Our song. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Oh, it's not just here either. You don't have to be anywhere. You know, any of these windows there, they're anywhere. Oh. <laughs> An orange New Jersey man was charged with three counts of racketeering and a black market sale of small men. Yeah. You know we're dancing to the news? <laughs> Molly. Yeah? When you're 44 and you're trying to remember back to if you were happy then, I mean, now, where do you think this memory's going to be? Because, uh, to tell the truth, I could see it going either way. Um, I think I'll look back and smile and remember that I once had and hope that I still have a friend who, if I wasn't 150% of age and hadn't already gone through all the things he was just getting excited about, it might have gone either way. But, see, I was, and I had, and that was the only way it could go. And I think you're probably the only person who could understand what it was that I just said. Yeah. I got you. Well, at least we got that out of the way. Nice. Ah! Have you ever been on the Staten Island Ferry? No. It goes right past the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. Come on, we can make the last uh, one. Now, how about getting something sweet? No, no, this is New York. We can eat any time, anywhere. The city that never sleeps. Oh, oh. Mom, we can eat somewhere else. I can tell you're just going to hate this place. Oh, I think it's cute. As long as they don't make me eat K-rations. <sighs> is this what it was like, these places? I don't know. I only went once. I was 17. The guy was engaged to a Tiffany. Oh, I thought you didn't meet Daddy until after the war. I didn't say it was him. I said the guy I was engaged to. But you mean you were engaged before? Well, I never knew this. Who was he? Bud Wolburn. He was in the Air Force. No. Why not? He flew his own plane before he got drafted. It's perfectly logical. Well, what happened to him? Bud. It's not important. How are you? Yes, it is. Tell me, Mother, what? 
Oh, Mother. No, he died during the war, didn't he? No. He came home, took off his uniform, looked like every other schlub in Forest Hills, tried to get me to use his parachute for a wedding dress. I told him to take a hike. How are you? I'm doing fine. You're doing wonderfully. Hi, Molly. Fred, well, uh, hi. Hi, Florence. Ah, oh, what a charming coincidence. It's been a long time, hasn't it? You think I'm going to say not long enough, but I won't say that. Although I might think it. <laughs> it's the first time I've been here. It's a, it's a neat place. Yeah, we were just saying the same thing. It must have been a neat time. Yeah, wasn't it, Mom? Yes, neat. Especially Hitler. Are you going to join us? No, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm kind of with somebody. Listen, Molly, I've left a couple of messages. The group's got a gig at the Vanguard tomorrow night. Yeah, uh, I got the messages. I just, didn't... just give it a shot. We're doing some of the planetarium music. It's part yours. You should be there. She can't. It's my birthday tomorrow night. No, it's not. Your birthday's April 23rd. How did you remember that? Well, the song may have ended, but the melody lingers on. Won't your company be missing you? Yeah. Well, listen, it has been good to see you. Yes, I love family reunion. So I'll talk to you. Yes. Try to make it if you can. I will, uh, if I can. So long. I think I handled that with a great deal of finesse. Yes, Mom, you were grace under pressure. Complimentary Enzio Beachhead appetizers. Don't pull those pins. Sounds good. Yeah. It's just, uh, just blowing out the smoke. No, it still sounds good. Well, it's, it's, it's the reverb out here. It's got something to do with the bricks or the sky or something. Hi. hi. Oh, hi. Uh, Fred Dunn. <laughs> hi. Fred. Oh my gosh, I've heard so much about you. It's great to meet you. Boy, look at this place, this club. This is such a great looking club. I can't believe I'm here. I've never been here. Every jazz immortal is played in that room. You know? This is so cool. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> well, well, we should probably get a table. Yeah, listen, I would like to try and get a table down front. So why don't I do that? And that way you two can just, you know, just whatever. So, <laughs> okay, I'll go upstairs and wait for you. All right, oh, Fred, good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Blow smoke out there, okay? All right, all right, I'm there. <laughs> so you made it. Yeah, I guess. I'm sorry about my mother yesterday. No. No sweat. I thought she handled it with a great deal of finesse. <laughs> so how's it going to be? Guys sound great. Yeah? All back together again, huh? Almost all. Oh, come on, Fred. I was never a part of it. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. I just sang a couple of sets from time to time. I wouldn't really... I would. <sighs> Does Kirsten sing? Yeah, a, a, a little. But is she inside? Nope. Uh, why, is she still out of town? Well, um, good luck tonight. What did he hear? What? Your pal heard a lot about me. What did he hear? Oh, oh, I don't know. You know, stuff. Stuff? Yeah, you know, this and that. Oh, stuff, like, uh, like the way I wear my hat, and yeah. the way I sip my tea. Uh, I remember a lot of stuff, too. Oh, yeah? Sure. Cigarette that bears the lipstick's traces, foolish things, romantic places, stars in Alabama, moonlight in Vermont. You know, we never went to any of those places, Fred. Uh, I don't smoke cigarettes. I think you probably got me confused with Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> Yeah, probably. But there was always some awful pretty music playing in the background, wasn't there? Mm. See you after the set? Yeah. Molly. Glad you came.
you, thank you. Thank you, it's nice to be back. Hey, together again. Yeah. Almost all of us. We have, uh, we have one more for you tonight. But I've got a confession to make first. You've been getting a bum deal here. We've been shortchanging you all night long, just, just by one. So let's see what we can do about it. Okay, 1975. What? No, come on, let's go. 1975. What, Molly? No, let's go. What, you... 1975, okay? It's February 18th. It's the first time that we're ever together. I'm 24, you're 24. What was the song, Fred? What song? Hey Jude, that's the song. Hey Jude, something in the way she moves. We went through a lot of them then. Christmas, I buy you a horn. You don't buy me anything because you forgot what date Christmas came on that year. But it was okay because you made it up to me in nine million other ways. Okay, 1976. I don't know what you're doing. Of course you do, Fred. It was no. your idea. What idea? Whose idea? This what? game, this game we've been playing with each other for God knows how long, okay? 1976. I'm not doing this alone. 1976, we get married. Now, there's about two weeks I've blanked out there, which is really too bad because it was probably the best time we ever had. Uh, 1976, what else? Are you going to help me or what? You're trying to tell me something. No, Fred, no. I am just doing what we've already been doing ever since you came back into my life. I am just doing it for the last time. So let's just get it over with once and for all. I mean, why don't you take 1977? Molly, I don't want to play this game. Oh, come on, Fred. we got 11 years here. Maybe we should just send out for some sandwiches because I'm not leaving here until it's over. Neither are you. And after that, I am not going back again. Just calm down what? a little bit. 
What is it with you? What? I am happy, that's what. It's hard to believe, I know, but I am doing fine. No, I am doing beautifully. Yeah, I can tell. Well, I couldn't, because I've been so busy waiting for something that... that already happened a long time ago. Every time I try to move on, you always pull me back into your life. Or I pull you back into mine. It's just... It won't work anymore. So what do you want me to do, fall off the face of the earth? No, it's... I mean, we'll see each other. We'll meet for coffee. I'll tell you about my jingles. You'll tell me about your music, about Kirsten. I'll tell you about whoever, and you'll stick me with a check, and I'll see you around. But that's it. OK. OK. Do I still got to do 1977? No. No, I think I made my point. Yeah, I think so. So I'll see you around. Right. Molly. I'm sorry, I just... I just sort of like it back there. Oh, so do I. But I like it here, too. Well, not actually in this particular bathroom, but here in the big sense. It's just all that stuff in between. It just makes me too... I fell asleep. Well, oh, it's okay. <laughs> oh, gosh, those lights really glitter, don't they? I mean, this really is an unbelievable city, isn't it, Cooper? That's what I've been trying to tell you, Molly. It's a magic town. That's a... Can't you hear it? Oh, I... The rumble of a subway train. The rattle of a taxi. It's a shim thing going on out there. By golly, it is the lullaby of Broadway.